My guest today is Joe Kunk. Joe, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, it's been a long time. It's been years since you've been on my show before. I'm glad you have me back. Thank you. What What are you doing these days? I am an application architect for DuPoint in Lansing, Michigan, so I do a lot of consulting with government and commercial clients. You ever do anything with SQL Server databases? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were a SQL MVP at one time, weren't you? Uh, Visual Basic MVP back oh, in the day. Is, all right, <laughs> um, but you worked a lot with SQL, and uh, and you were telling we were talking off camera about uh, a tool that you've kind of become enamored with. Tell me about it. Yes, so this tool is called SQLPlus.net. That's actually the URL URL of the tool. Um, and what I really like about this tool, it's a SQL Server ORM. Um, you would say it's a companion or a competitor to something like Andy Framework or Dapper or even ADO.net. Mm -hmm. um, and what I really like about it is it's very SQL focused. So if you're comfortable writing in SQL Server, you know, standard queries, uh, or even just, you know, simplistic stored procedures, um, this really, really uh, makes it easy to, you know, interact with the database because it doesn't abstract anything away. You're just working directly with a SQL. But because of the way it's set up, um, you have a lot of control over how the code uh, or how the database interactions occur, and it and it saves you a lot of coding time. Okay. So before before you go any further, you mentioned mm -hmm. ORM. Can you define that, mm -hmm. please? Sure. It's an object object relational mapper, and what it does is it allows you to communicate to and from the database from um, C sharp or any .NET language. And it makes it easier by providing you, you know, um, actual .NET classes for the data rather than having you have to do something like, you know, walk a data, a data table or and things like that. So it's okay. strongly, strongly typed instead of loosely typed. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, a developer-friendly tool, and it's uh, uh, been a, uh, ORMs have been around for I don't know, 20 years probably uh, mm -hmm. at least. But this is a new thing. Yes, relatively right. new. I think it's been around for a couple of years, but it's it's, it's right. new to me. Right. <laughs> and new I'm to me as well, definitely. And I hope it'll be new to others because it's got some really great features. Okay, I'm sorry I interrupted. Please continue. Okay, no, no problem. So um, the, the basic approach is, you know, um, Andy Framework ab abstracts a little bit. It, it has the context, and then you write link queries against it. So you're not directly working with SQL. Um, same thing with Dapper. But with this one, you are working directly with SQL. And the approach is that you would take a store procedure, you can uh, take a, you would take a store procedure and you throw some comment annotations on it in a certain format. And then you, the uh, product is installed as a um, VSIX um, you know, add-in to Visual Studio, a plugin, and okay. then it's a plugin, and then you run that plugin, and it gener actually generates all of the services, input classes, output classes, um, and even you know validations for you. So it's a code generator approach versus something like Andy Framework, where it's a link query. Hmm. Now, now, what's the advantage of that? Well, the advantage is that he, because it's code generated, and he and the product is able to. Uh, take a lot of context or metadata out of those comments, um, it can generate um, a lot of code that you would otherwise have to write. For example, um, you can specify with just a comment in SQL Server that you know this is a credit card, this parameter is a credit card. And what it'll do is it will validate on the input class when you be, when you call the service, that that really is a credit card because that code to validate that credit card is generated as part of the process. Oh, so, so no, no, just to be clear, I I assume mm -hmm. you're saying it'll validate that the format looks like a credit card. Yeah, it follows right. It won't actually validate that. The no, no, no. It doesn't. It doesn't go card. against your payment processor. No, I'm <laughs> sorry. I, I I apologize for not being more clear on that. Okay, uh, so that was just my, one of my examples. So, yeah, so there's sure, a number yeah. of validations. Phone, phone numbers, for example, uh, have a format. Yes. And, uh, social yes. security numbers, or yes. even even names. You know, the, the, right. in, in 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 certain countries, there's always a first name and a last name. And... Right, right. So 
for example, um, you can add comments to every parameter. So as in your input class, let me, can I can I show just a, a brief sure. uh, yeah, that might be helpful. example of, of it? Let's I think it'll be easier screen. to understand. Yes, I think it'll be much easier to understand. Gotcha. Okay, so here's an example of a annotated stored procedure using SQLplus.net. And you can see at the very top, it just the, the each, all of the comments are just dash dash plus. That's the standard format. Hmm. Um, and so you would just comment any piece of SQL that you write. And in this case, it has an author. This is from his examples. Uh, you can add a comment to the stored procedure, and, and that comment then would show up as an annotation in the class that's generated. To the, oh, uh, interesting. So most yep. ORMs, you're going to be annotating the .NET code. Here, you're annotating the SQL Server. You're annotating the SQL Server. And you're saying this one's coming back. You expect a single row. It'll error if it isn't a single row, um, and that's helpful in your code. Mm -hmm. um, here, they're saying this first parameter feedback ID is required, and there's the comment on that feedback ID. So in your input class, if you see the uh, parameter for feedback ID, it'll have that comment on it, uh, you know, whatever kind, comment you put in there. That's kind of a useless comment, but you could put something more descriptive in there saying this is the ID. It, for, exactly. So Again, this primary is... Primary key for the feedback. Or right. This, was, this is his demo. but um, That's my feedback. <laughs> yeah, and that's good feedback. Um, so then here at the end, you can say, OK, this uh, if I got a row count back of 0, then I'm going to return in my output class an enumeration that says not found. Mm. And if it did return any records, then I'm going to return an enumeration that was OK. Uh, that so, is really useful, because 0 and yes. 1 don't intuitively mean anything to me, whereas right. OK but it comes found. Right. So it'll have that, those enumerations in the output class. So it becomes very, very easy to, you know, check any any SQL interaction you've done and then, you know, see the results. Hmm. Um, so. Oh, nice. And then and, how do you consume this on the .NET side? On the .NET side, what you would do is you just create an, it generates these classes. So you run, you run the generator. It generates these classes. You would instantiate an instance of the input class that was generated from your parameters in your stored procedure that were commented, you know, were annotated. Mm -hmm. And then you create the, it's very, very simple. It's create an instance of the input class, provide your parameters, call the service, and then get back an output class. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that's really nice is that because all of the logic, database logic is in the, is in the stored procedures, your process for interacting with the database is exactly the same every time. It's, you know, create the input class, call the service, check the output class, and everything's strongly typed. Um, is it fair to say that I, I have to use stored procedures when I'm working with SQL Plus? I mean, it's, can I use uh, ad hoc queries, for example? It is a generated code, so ad hoc is not available. Um, okay. And but if you like some some in situations, it's not easy to do it, get a store procedure put into a database, right? You have to go through the DBA and everything else. Oh, yeah. So they they have a process called concrete queries, which is essentially a store store procedure, but just written as a as a uh, that's, as a file in the project, and ah. it'll read it'll read that SQL out of the project, your internal C sharp project, the same way it would read a stored procedure. So you essentially can write local if you want to consider it local code yeah. store procedures. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, it seems like this, uh, when I'm comparing this to Entity Framework, which is the one that I, I, I know best, mm -hmm. uh, the ORM that I know best, that this is um, uh, not abstracting away the SQL. Entity Framework does works really hard for you to not have to think about the SQL. Right. And right. Which, which a lot of times is good. It's, it's, it simplifies things because you're just working with mm -hmm. you know, uh, POCO, plain old CLR objects. But... <laughs> you run into a wall sometimes. Say it's not doing what I want it to do. It's it's or it's slow. Right. I want right. to I want to dig into the SQL, and that's right. where entity framework sometimes becomes more difficult to work with. So that is that, correct. And th this I would call this approach database friendly, right? DBA friendly, because this is just standard SQL. If I'm having any yeah. kind of issues, any concerns, I can take it to a DBA and say, hey, help me figure this out. The DBA would not have to know have to know anything about link or any framework mm -hmm. or those things. 
yeah, it seems also that this is uh, if you're a, if you're really comfortable with SQL, or if you've got your stored procedures already written, this is a really nice alternative right. Uh, right. to these other ORMs. Right, and if you're bringing up a brand new system, um, a brand new database, he the the product supplies. Uh, store procedures you can run that will actually generate all your CRUD for all your tables. And CRUD so is? It, uh, sorry. Create, read, update, delete routines. Okay. And, and of course, uh, so, uh, you know, it'll generate uh, an update routine, update, delete, um, you know, create, update, delete, qu qu uh, general query, and a query by ID. So that means for those things, I don't have to write a stored procedure. If all I want to do is just insert a row into a table or delete one row from a table, is that correct? You would still have to have the stored procedure, but it will the stored procedure that he provide the product provides will generate those for you. I'm, I see. So you don't you don't have to write them. Got it. Okay. Um, tell me a little. Tell me about the cost. Is this a commercial product or an open source project? Or what? It's a little bit of both. Um, okay. It is a commercial product. And it basically follows the same rules as uh, the Visual Studio Community Edition. If you have a small company, if you're doing education, if you're doing research, um, if you're an independent developer, um, it's free. They ha oh, and nice. they have a so they have a community edition, and the com the community edition is full featured. You're not losing anything. So it's only if you're a, a corporate developer essentially that you would have to pay a fee to use this. And the uh, fee is $99 per year per developer. So it's, it's very inexpensive. Right. Um, and is it, are they essentially the same product other than uh, the, the, the way you're using it? Or are there add, added features if you pay for it? At this time, they're, they are exactly the same features. Okay. So if you're making yeah. money off of the software you're writing with this, then you should pay for it. Otherwise, it's free. Which I think is reasonable. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's also nice if you want to try it, try before you buy. You may just play around with it for a, for a couple of months um, oh, yeah, for free. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then once you decide, okay, this is good, I'm going to put it into my product, then, right. of course, $99 to sell that fantastic right. product that you're building. is uh, Right. So <laughs> I want to nice. mention a few more features that this thing can do Please. Um, that the generation allows. Okay. You can generate enums out of the database with this. You can identify in your configuration that a particular query will, is to be used to generate an enum list, and it'll generate that enum list and throw it into your code as mm, part okay. of the generation process. It'll also do static data. So if you have lists of things that rarely change, you can specify in the config that you want to make that a static class of data, you know, just a POCO st static POCO class in your application, and it will generate that, and now you don't even have to go to the database to get that, that list. Oh, nice. So you save trips to the database. Um, it, it can do multi-row returns. Obviously, it's got to be able to do multiple row return queries. It can return JSON. It can uh, do the MARS, multiple active result sets, where you have essentially three queries in a row and all come back into one set, into one POCO output uh, class. Okay. Um, it's, it can return XML. Um, and uh, it can do support and JSON transaction. out there, right? Uh, JSON, yes. I did, if okay. I didn't say that. Yes. You said XML, uh, but uh, I, JSON, I JSON XML, returns. XML yep. in a while. And so some of the, the validations that are built in, and these validations are ones, of course, then that you don't have to write. Uh, credit card, um, email format, HTML format, minimum and maximum <laughs> lengths of a string, a password format, postal codes, um, a new... You know the um, and you can even specify a regex on a parameter, so it'll oh. validate that parameter with a regex, and if it fails, it won't even send the the call to the database. Mm. Another uh, another but... thing, David, too, is it comes with snippets. You saw that we had these annotations, and there's quite a few of them. So it it does come with uh, it does come with annotations that will let you you know drop those uh, comments in. So there you go. You don't have to. You don't have to remember them. They're all on. They're available on via snippets in uh, SQL Server Management Studio. You, you mentioned that it's a Visix uh, Visual Studio plugin that makes it work with Visual Studio, but you're not using Visual Studio here. You're using SQL Server. Uh, was it um, uh, Management Studio? That's correct. What What gets that IntelliSense to show up here? So you run. You would run the uh, generator in the 
C Visual Studio application or solution. So um, I'm still sharing my screen. Let me go ahead and bring up that. Hi. So the way this would work then is I've generated my uh, store procedures. I would have a database uh, connection class here that just basically points to the SQL Server so it knows how to go read uh, the SQL code. And then on the project, I just right click, I would run the SQL plus .NET build tool. Okay. And there's, there is a login for it, okay. um, which I've already logged in. And then you just run the build and it'll go through and generate the, the classes that are needed mm. there. So all that, the database, all the database areas I identified were scanned and the code was generated to interact with them. So like, here's the input, here's a generated input class. Um, and then, you know, the output class and such things. And okay. so all just based on what it saw on the tables. Excellent. And it handles a uh, hierarchical data sets as well, right? If I have uh, parent child relationships, for example. In this scenario, that would probably be a single query, but with joins, and then it would come back as a, uh, uh, an output class of whatever the result of the query was. Okay. Um, where uh, where's a good place to go for people that are just starting out with this? Go to their website, which is SQL Plus SQLP SQLPLUS.net. Excellent. I'm looking at it right now, and I see that there's actually a uh, what is it? Uh, learn more. Or get started in minutes and learn more. Right, and, and, <laughs> and it's got right a number on the page. Right, it's got a number of videos that are very very helpful. Okay. Um, and then the classes, the services that he generates are, or that the, that the company generates um, are in partial classes. So you can extend them. Nice. Does this only work with SQL Server or does it work with other databases? It's SQL Server only at this point. Okay. And, uh, and also the client is only .NET or is, it, is that extended somewhere else? Like .NET only. Okay. All right. It, yep. Totally makes sense. And I believe it's C sharp only at this point. Oh, interesting. Uh, bad break for those VB MVPs. Yeah, former ones like me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there anything that we haven't covered that you think we should? Um, well, he has a he has a GitHub. Uh, uh, the company has a. I, I've talked a lot with the owner, so I'm sorry if I say he. Oh, where are they um, located? Uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay, um, so he's got, uh, they have a GitHub repository with a lot of sample code, which was really helpful. And another thing that they have is that it supports uh, transient errors or connection errors. If you're writing a mobile okay. app and you have trouble, you know, connecting to SQL, and you know that it, that you might get certain SQL errors because of the connection spotty, um, it has the code that's generated has an interface that can be implemented that will handle those uh, intermittent SQL connection errors. This is really interesting, Joe. I've, I've learned a lot, and this is a different approach to ORMs than I've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, before I let you go, are you, I know you used to do a lot of public speaking. Are you doing any these days? I'm still doing some, obviously remote at this point. Um, and next week I'm speaking at the Cleveland.net user group uh, with Sam Nasser's uh, group on this same topic. I'm a big Sam Nasser fan. I've spoken to that, that group a few times, and that's a good group. Yep. All right. Well, thank you very much, and you stay safe. Thank you. Many of my friends have come from a shared passion of technology.